Hello there, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of 5-Minute Gaming News, this show that is back for another week. Let's do this thing. Today in the news, I don't think YouTube really understands video games and gaming audiences. Before we begin, let me start with a story. This is 100% true. It happened, and I think about it quite often when it comes to the world of YouTube. So long ago, I don't know, eight, nine years ago at this point, I was in a meeting with many, many other YouTubers and executives at YouTube. We we're all sitting around talking about just the YouTuber experience, audiences and retention and all the different things that YouTube talks about. And during that conversation, I'll never forget talking about gaming and gaming YouTube. And the question was brought up, why is it that gaming YouTube continuously creates some of the biggest buzz and the most watch time for YouTube but is the least important thing to them. And the answer we got back was gaming is not sexy. And I think about that all the time. When it comes to anything YouTube does, I imagine there's an executive somewhere who's just like, what is it sexy? And that is how I have always thought YouTube approaches games. How can we make this sexy? How can we change this up? What kind of clever thing can we do to spin this besides just games. If you're wondering what I mean and you're looking for a few examples, I got you. A few years back, myself and my dear friends Alex and Gerard, we were invited to be a part of this big live stream event on YouTube. It was across three channels that they had curated and prepared, and the idea was that we would be presenting indie games. And it would be all about indie games. And across the three channels, there would be myself, Gerard, and Alex, we'd be one channel, and then another channel would be a very big time superstar, and then the other channel would be another set of streamers, influencers, whatever. This big producer comes in, and he just starts doling out money, but not to us, because when we pitched our idea, we said, what if instead of it being this big crazy thing, it was just us inviting friends on to play indie games? And we did it under the setting of like a luau. And so we had food and drinks and we had a band come in. We we're gonna, we had, we pitched this crazy idea. And they were like, I don't know. It's not very, it's not very interesting. And we were just like, yeah, but people want to see the games. They don't, they're not tuning in for like some goofy stuff. They want to see what the games are. They did not listen to us at all. So what ended up happening is the big time hotshot stream channel was literally just them doing a show they already do and pocketing all the money. Then the other channel was all these influencers and talent and it was very impressive, but it was them doing real world versions of the games, barely playing the games. Meanwhile, we did our idea and we just streamed the games and it had the most views and the most interactions. And at the end of the event, the guy who was running the whole thing came up to us and was like, oh, I misjudge you guys. I didn't think, I didn't think, uh, I didn't think you'd be the big hit, but I stand corrected. I don't think they understand <laughs> what people care about when it comes to games. And to sum up, that is my experience in the YouTube world of gaming. So when I see YouTube has announced the first ever interactive gaming live stream called YouTube Game On, I immediately think, one, isn't that what all live streams are anyway? And two... They are going to mess this up. On Saturday, August 27th, for two hours, content hosted by 60 popular creators will feature unique gaming challenges, allowing viewers to vote for how the stream will play out. This fully interactive live stream celebrates the diversity of gaming content that makes up YouTube gaming culture, from entertaining gaming challenges and surprise gameplay moments to honoring classic game anniversaries all of which are inspired by the most popular trends on the platform. What can you look forward to? Well, here are some examples. One segment is a Hot Ones Challenge, where viewer-selected players will go head-to-head -head playing Street Fighter VI, and where defeated players must eat increasingly hot wings. Also, there's Grandma and Grand Poppy Playtime, where seniors play Poppy Playtime. They also say games featured will include Among Us, Fall Guys, Fortnite, Free Fire, Friday Night Funkin', Grand Theft Auto V, Minecraft, Mortal Kombat 11, Poppy Playtime, Rocket League, Street Fighter VI, Trackmania, and more. Now just rewind the video. They're gonna do this all in two hours? What? Unless this is the most manic, hyperactive edit in the history of YouTube. How? To reiterate, this is a show featuring the biggest 
gaming talent on YouTube. And yet somehow is only two hours long and features over a dozen games and gimmicks. But who greenlit this? Why greenlight this? And I feel like our answer is found over in the last sentence in the article about this on Video Game Chronicle, which explains, according to YouTube, the featured creators represent over 400 million subscribers and more than 150 billion combined lifetime views on the platform. So it's a publicity stunt. It's all about stunting on another platform, wink its Twitch, and saying we have all these creative talent, come watch our stream, and it has nothing to do with any of those talent can actually do, it's all about numbers and algorithmic shit, and it's just what you would expect from YouTube. Let's take something that could have been good and ruin it by trying to make it sexy. And that, I think, really sucks. Speaking of things I think don't suck, that's as good a transition as you're gonna get. It's time for releases. Tomorrow, the follow-up to the delightful Two Point Hospital, Two Point Campus arrives. Build and manage your own university, create different buildings on the campus grounds, in fact, create the campus grounds. And while you're at it, the curriculum for your prestigious educational institution. So unlike that 8 a.m. Monday, Wednesday, Friday class you registered for, you definitely shouldn't sleep on this one. On the 11th, bring your roll of quarters for Arcade Paradise, a totally radical looking business sim where you decide to turn your family's laundromat into an arcade. Honestly, the dream of every 80s kid. The crazy part is that this game is more than just a sim, with each of the many arcade games that you can get being fully realized and playable. It's a fascinating mix of genres and I am totally here for it. Speaking of a mix of genres, also on the 11th, the super cute cult simulator Cult of the Lamb Raises Hell. Take on the role of a sacrificial lamb who's been brought back by a mysterious deity to seek revenge and create a cult of your own. It's like an insane mix of Binding of Isaac, Cat Quest, Don't Starve, and Animal Crossing. Venture into the forest to battle minions of the other gods, and then return home and manage your cult. I have got a feeling this game is gonna be the big winner this week. Speaking of big winners, everyone over over at patreon.com slash jesse cox they're winning big and you can too just like ethan carr jason lands and darcy burrell anyway that's it for the show thanks so much be back tomorrow with another episode of five minute gaming news